when Volkanovski fought the first time <clears throat> and he was perfectly prepared, it was an amazing fight. I thought he won. I thought it was very close, but I thought he won. I gave the, the, I think round two was the difference, and I could see round two going either way, but I gave it to Volk. But I was like, when when they announced it, the rematch, part of me was like, ooh, that's a great fight. But the other part of me was like, ee, this is the number one, in my opinion, this is the fight for number one pound for pound, right? I believe Volk won the first fight, although very close. It's, I don't think it's a robbery, but very close. And I think that puts him as the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And then he loses the fight to Islam. He gets caught with that head kick, and then he gets knocked out by Taporia. Now he's not even in the conversation anymore. So this is a short amount of time, you know, and then everything kind of falls apart. And I think it wouldn't have fallen apart if not for the rematch. If it wasn't for the rematch, if he just waited for Taporia, I think, I got to think that head kick has a factor. I mean, to get brained like that with a shin to the dome, which is the, the worst way to get knocked out. You know, it's, it's so much power in legs. I mean, your legs are you're carrying your, your, your legs are carrying your body around all day. I don't think people that have never been kicked understand how much more power is in a leg. Yeah, I wouldn't know. You get head kicked like that, and then you fight the a guy who's obviously the most dangerous boxer in the division in the next fight, and get KO'd. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know the. I've had a couple of concussions from grappling, like accidents, but I knees don't, and headbutts, yeah, clashes. Yeah. Always that one <clears throat> asshole, you know, mm -hmm. going crazy. But I don't know really <clears throat> the effects of that. It's so hard to judge. Like it's like, I don't know what testing they can do, but it's like uh, they can't do much. Unfortunately, they they do. There there are some tests, but the the reality is, every time you get knocked out, it's easier for that person to get knocked out again. And psychologically, I think for the opponents, like for me, coaching Volks, like there were matches where like even with well, the fights when like say we'll take Adam in the sub and it's like when he keeps doing these impossible things, you believe in the myth of your guy more and more. Right. And other fighters do too. They go, oh, couldn't, we couldn't submit him. Look how deep Ortega was. Well, it's was. his heart. His heart is just unstoppable. But I think when a guy gets clipped like that, everyone else goes... They suddenly have a bit more self belief, so I think yes, it's like two two factors. Yeah, I think you're probably right, but I think Toporia thought he was going to do that to him anyway. But the, the, I would just love to have seen him fully recover from that. Like when Manny Pacquiao got knocked out by Marquez, Freddie Roach wouldn't let him do anything for a year. He's like, "You're going to take one year off." He's like, "This is the only way. You, you have to." And Freddie Roach, who has trauma-induced Parkinson's from his boxing career, he's well aware of the impact. Of brain damage and you know it's it's so tricky because I'm just such a huge Volk fan that I just look I wish I had his ear I, I don't know if he would have listened to me but if I, I had his ear I think that's what makes those guys special though is that they don't they're like it's the self-belief 100% that's you know? what makes you a champion you cannot become a Volkanovsky without this unstoppable belief in yourself me and him are the complete opposite hey if someone was like bro you're probably gonna lose I'm like yeah you make a good point <laughs> I'm like, how much are they paying me? You know, we're complete opposite, and he takes everything super serious, sporting everything. I don't know how we've blended together. I'm able to coach him somehow. Well, you're very technical. I mean, the the thing about your, you know, joking around and being silly about it all is like, you are, but your technique is very, very good. Obviously, you you are obviously are one of the elite guys in the world when it comes to technique. So it's not you. You are serious. Yeah, I mean personality type, you know. Yeah. Like, but I guess we have the Australian Australian bond. He has faith in me, more faith in me than the guy that gave me this. I think. <laughs> <laughs> they both probably shouldn't now. What is uh, Volk up to now? Do you, I think do you he's talk in, to he's him? He's in Thailand training at Bangtao with his. Uh, so Volk's wrestling coach Frank Hickman. They have a gym in Thailand, so he's out in Bangtao getting some work in. I want to get him a grappling match. I said to him, I said, man, like uh, if we're going to take some time away because of the concussions, let's get you a grappling match. And my thought was. How like cool would it be to see him and Ortega have a grappling match? Oh my God, that'd be incredible! I would just love to see it in that setting because Ortega obviously struggles to submit him in MMA. Yeah, let's see what happens in a grappling match. Right, with no gloves too. Yeah, that would be very interesting. Ortega's very good on the ground. He's very sneaky too. Yeah, so he's, yeah, he's super slick. He pull, he man, he catches some crazy shit out there. Mm -hmm. He'd be losing a fight like two, three rounds, get one look at a guillotine, mm -hmm. finish it. It's crazy. No, and his guillotine is fucking death. I mean, when Volkanovski got out of that, the mounted guillotine, his face looked like a grape and just would not tap, 
Would I'd, not tap. I had no idea how he got out, but I told everyone, I was like, yeah, obviously that's me. Buy the DVD. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Support his traveling coach. I take credit for that. Well, he's an animal. 99.9% of the world would have tapped. He's like that in the gym. I remember I would choke him in the gym sometimes, and he'll go from putting his chin in to taking it out as your grip's in there. Like, he'll try and switch it from, like, uh, I guess, like, the front choke to the to the blood vessels. He just changes how you choke him and can survive down there. Wow. I don't know how he does it. He should teach me that shit. I think it's just his brain. Too Yeah, too tough. Yeah, yeah he's a fucking animal. And so does he have a plan to come back? Does he... I don't. I don't know what's going on. I imagine it's probably Holloway versus Taporia. I think that's going to happen. And then I, I think so. I hope personally we get Volks a grappling match. Maybe we get him at this event. I'm hoping we get him. We get some MMA guys at this event. Is he thinking about doing something like that? Like uh, he, he has not have a whole lot of time, right? When is this? This event? is August 16th, 17th. Yeah, so not much time. But I mean, if he's in shape, he's training. He's out Bangtown, Thailand, get some rounds in. I think it's fine, especially against another MMA guy. They both have the same type of training. You know, it's not like. He's taking on a pure grappler that's only grappling. 